USS Forrestal USS Forrestal was the first of the US Navy's supercarriers. It stretched more than 1,000 feet long and was painted in dark gray with a flat flight deck and a large control tower on the right side. Launched in the mid-1950s, it was built to carry dozens of advanced fighter jets and support long deployments at sea. By July 1967, the carrier was off the coast of Vietnam, launching regular airstrikes. Over 5,000 people were on board, including Lieutenant Commander John McCain, who would later become a U.S. Senator. On July 29th, the crew was preparing to launch another wave of aircraft when something went terribly wrong. A Zuni rocket on an F-4 Phantom II accidentally fired due to a power surge. The rocket hit an A-4 Skyhawk parked nearby, tearing through its fuel tank. Jet fuel sprayed across the deck and caught fire almost instantly. The flames spread fast. One of the 1,000-pound bombs loaded on the Skyhawk was heated by the fire and exploded. The blast triggered more explosions as other bombs, rockets, and aircrafts ignited. The fire grew out of control, burning through the flight deck and causing more fuel to spill below. By the time the fires were finally put out, 134 crew members had died and 161 were injured. 21 aircraft were destroyed. Investigations showed that old, unstable bombs left over from earlier wars were being used, and electrical connectors called pigtails had been hooked up too early against safety rules. These mistakes made the accident far worse. HMS Glorious In June 1940, the British aircraft carrier HMS Glorious was returning from Norway. She had just completed a rare and dangerous mission, evacuating fighter planes belonging to the Royal Air Force. These included 10 Gloucester Gladiators and 8 Hawker Hurricanes, which had successfully landed on the ship's deck, even though they weren't designed for carrier landings. HMS Glorious was heading home towards Scapa Flow in Scotland, escorted by two destroyers, HMS Ardent and HMS Acasta. The ship's captain, Guy de Oily Hughes, reportedly requested to break away from the main fleet, possibly to speed up a court-martial he wanted to carry out against his air commander. While traveling through the Norwegian Sea, the group was suddenly spotted by two large German warships, Scharnhorst and Neisenau. HMS Glorious had no air patrols flying overhead and was not equipped with radar, so the enemy approached without warning. The German ships opened fire from over 16 miles away. One of the first shells hit the flight deck, setting off fires and stopping any aircraft from launching. Then another hit the bridge, killing the captain and cutting off communication with the ship. The destroyers fought back fiercely. HMS Acasta even fired torpedoes and managed to hit Scharnhorst, causing real damage. But the destroyers were overwhelmed, and all three British ships were sunk. Out of more than 1,500 men across the three ships, only 43 survived. Afterward, many experts questioned why HMS Glorious was left so exposed. They criticized the decision to sail without air cover, without radar, and with so few escorts. Some believe the rush to handle a court-martial may have led to this fatal mistake. USS Bunker Hill In May 1945, the USS Bunker Hill, a large American aircraft carrier, was stationed near Okinawa, Japan. It was supporting Allied forces during one of the final and fiercest battles of World War II. The flight deck was packed with combat aircraft like F-4U Corsairs and SB-2C Helldivers. These planes were fully fueled, armed, and getting ready to launch missions against Japanese targets on land. The crew had been working almost non-stop for nearly two months, and many were resting during a short break in the fighting. While the ship was in a more relaxed state, two Japanese kamikaze pilots carried out a sudden suicide attack. The first plane dropped a 550-pound bomb that tore through the flight deck and exploded just above the water inside the ship. Then it slammed into the deck, setting off a massive fire among the planes parked closely together. Just seconds later, a second kamikaze crashed into the area near the ship's control tower and caused another deadly explosion. The fire spread quickly, fed by the fuel and ammunition on the deck. The explosion destroyed 78 aircraft, turned the flight deck into flames, and filled the ship with smoke. A total of 393 crew members were killed, 264 were badly injured, and 41 were never found. The crew fought through the chaos and managed to save the ship from sinking. After the attack, the Navy realized the ship had been too relaxed during combat operations. Investigators said open ventilation and a lack of air patrols made the ship more vulnerable. IJN Tayano In June 1944, the Japanese aircraft carrier Tayano was leading a major naval operation during the Battle of the Philippine Sea. It was Japan's newest and most heavily armored carrier, carrying dozens of fighter planes like Mitsubishi Zeros and torpedo bombers. These aircraft were sent out to attack the American fleet and try to stop their advances across the Pacific. The ship was loaded with aviation fuel, 
bombs, and ammunition, all stored below deck for long combat missions. Shortly after launching its planes, the American submarine USS Albacore spotted the carrier and fired torpedoes. One of them struck the right side of Tayano near the front, where gasoline tanks were located. The explosion didn't sink the ship right away, but it cracked open a fuel tank. Gasoline started leaking inside, filling parts of the ship with flammable vapors. To clear the air, the crew turned on the ship's ventilation system, but instead of removing the fumes, it spread them throughout the lower decks in the hangar. Several hours later, those trapped gasoline vapors caught fire. The explosion was massive. It ripped through the center of the ship, blasted open the hangar deck, and caused the heavy steel flight deck to buckle. Fire swept through the ship, and she began to sink. About 1,650 men were lost along with the ship. Later, experts said the design of the ship had serious problems. The fuel tanks were placed too close to critical spaces, and the crew didn't have the right training to deal with a fuel leak like this. USS Franklin USS Franklin was a large American aircraft carrier from the Essex class, painted in navy gray and stretching over 870 feet long. She had a wide, flat flight deck and a tall tower on the right side. Nicknamed Big Ben, she was known for her strong air power and active role in the Pacific during World War II. In March 1945, she was operating just 50 miles off the coast of Japan, supporting airstrikes to weaken defenses before the planned invasion of Okinawa. On board were more than 3,000 crew members, including pilots and officers. On March 19th, while getting ready to launch a new wave of aircraft, a Japanese dive bomber slipped through unnoticed and dropped two bombs directly on the ship. One bomb exploded near the center of the flight deck and went down into the hangar where more planes were parked. The second hit was closer to the back of the ship. At that moment, dozens of aircraft were loaded with fuel and live bombs. The explosions caused the fuel to ignite and triggered a deadly chain of reaction. Bombs and rockets began exploding on the deck and below it. Fire spread quickly, and black smoke filled the ship. Some crew members were trapped, while others stayed to fight the flames in dangerous conditions. Over 800 men were killed and nearly 500 were badly injured. The crew still managed to save the ship, and Franklin made it back to the United States. Investigators later said the amount of fuel and weapons stored together made the ship extremely vulnerable. HMS Eagle HMS Eagle was a British aircraft carrier with a long, flat flight deck, a sturdy hull, and a tall island structure rising from the right side. She was first laid down as a battleship for Chile, but was converted into a carrier before being completed. Commissioned in the 1920s, she became well known for her service in the Mediterranean, especially for missions delivering aircraft to Malta during World War II. Her design was stable but lacked some of the modern protections newer carriers had by the 1940s. On August 11, 1942, Eagle was part of Operation Pedestal, a critical mission to escort supply ships into the island of Malta, which was under siege by Axis forces. The carrier was sailing through the Mediterranean with more than 1,100 people on board, including her crew and air personnel. Among them was Vice Admiral Edmund Rushbrook. The mission was dangerous, with the fleet constantly under threat from submarines and aircraft. While moving roughly 80 miles south of Mallorca, the German submarine U-73 got close enough to fire a spread of torpedoes. Four of them slammed into Eagle's side. The explosion ripped open the hull and water flooded in rapidly. The ship tilted hard to one side and went down in just about four minutes. It was so fast, there was little time for organized evacuation. Around 160 men were killed. Nearly 930 survivors were pulled from the sea by nearby escort ships. After the disaster, experts pointed to Eagle's outdated underwater protection and the lack of radar as key weaknesses. The ship had no early warning and couldn't defend itself from a well-planned submarine attack. USS Princeton USS Princeton was a light aircraft carrier from the Independence class. Known for its sleek design, flat flight deck, and smaller size compared to fleet carriers, Painted in navy gray with a compact island tower, she was built for speed and quick deployment. Commissioned in 1943, she served actively in the Pacific during World War II and gained recognition for supporting major operations like air raids over the Mariana and the Philippines. On October 24, 1944, Princeton was part of Task Group 38.3, operating near the island of Luzon during the Battle of Lady Gulf. The carrier had around 1,400 people on board, including pilots, sailors, and officers. Her mission was to launch air support for American forces landing on Lady Island. As the ship prepared for operations, a Japanese dive bomber broke through and dropped a 550-pound bomb directly onto the flight deck. The bomb pierced through and exploded inside the hangar, setting off fires where aircraft were parked fully loaded with gasoline and explosives. 
the fire grew quickly and spread below deck. It reached the stored bombs and rockets, triggering massive secondary explosions. The light cruiser Birmingham pulled alongside to help with firefighting and rescue, but another huge explosion on Princeton sent debris and flames outward, severely damaging Birmingham and killing many of her crew. In total, 108 people from Princeton and 241 from Birmingham died, with hundreds more injured. Experts later said the carrier's light armor and the way fuel and munitions were stored made the ship extremely vulnerable. They also noted the high risk to support ships during rescue attempts. HMS Ark Royal HMS Ark Royal was a British aircraft carrier painted in naval gray, built with a long flat flight deck and a tall island tower on the right side. Unlike early carriers, she was designed from the ground up to carry aircraft, not converted from another ship. She became famous for her role in World War II, especially for helping disable the German battleship Bismarck. Her sleek design and large hangar space made her one of the Royal Navy's most important carriers at the time. On November 13, 1941, Ark Royal was returning to Gibraltar after delivering aircraft to Malta. She was part of Force H, sailing with other warships for protection. On board were about 1,488 crew members, including her captain, Loben Mound. While traveling roughly 35 miles east of Gibraltar, the German submarine U-81 fired a torpedo that struck the carrier in the middle of the hull. The blast ripped open a hole nearly 130 feet long and 30 feet wide, causing water to rush into the engine space and power systems. The flooding cut off electricity to key parts of the ship, and internal communications were lost. As the ship began to lean to one side, the captain ordered the engines shut down. The command didn't reach the crew quickly because of the power failure. The lean grew worse, and Captain Mond gave the order to abandon ship. Crews from nearby destroyers rescued most of the sailors. Only one man, able seaman Edward Mitchell, died during the incident. Experts later blamed the sinking on several design flaws. The ship didn't have a backup power source, which made it impossible to control the damage once electricity was lost. The engine rooms were not properly sealed off, so water spread quickly. The lack of watertight sections made the ship much harder to save. USS Enterprise USS Enterprise was the world's first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier. Painted in dark gray and stretching over 1,100 feet long, it had a wide, flat flight deck and a tall island tower on the right side. With eight nuclear reactors, it was built for speed, power, and long-range missions. By early 1969, Enterprise was getting ready for its fourth combat deployment to Vietnam, running final battle drills near Hawaii. On board were about 4,600 personnel, including sailors, officers, and aviation crew members. On January 14th, during these drills, a piece of ground equipment called a Huffer was placed near an F-4 Phantom jet. This unit was used to start the aircraft's engines, but its hot exhaust was too close to one of the jet's loaded Zuni rockets. The rocket overheated and exploded. The blast tore into the aircraft and caused its fuel tank to burst. Jet fuel spilled across the deck and caught fire, triggering more explosions as the flame reached other rockets and bombs nearby. Fireballs erupted one after another, burning through the flight deck and allowing flaming fuel to pour down into the lower levels of the ship. In total, there were 18 explosions, 28 people were killed, 344 were injured, and 15 aircraft were destroyed. After the fire was contained, investigations confirmed that the heater had been placed too close to the armed jet. A junior crew member had noticed the danger before the blast, but was not listened to.